Hey Bookworms! I'm Book Mouse. And I'm Book King. And this is Our, Our Book Nook. Nook. Today we, I decided to, um, or rather this last couple weeks, I decided to check out a New York Times bestseller that's current. Uh, well, as of just the middle of December when I looked up the lists and did my planning. And I chose Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nunn. And it was published, which I didn't mention last week, by James Patterson. I think he has a publishing house called Jimmy, Jimmy Books or Jimmy Patterson or something like that. Um, I think it's Jimmy Books. I found that, I was, I was surprised. I knew he was an author. I didn't know he was a publisher. But now I do. Um, and so, yeah, let's take a look at what our thoughts are. <laughs> Once again, unfortunately, we have a trigger warning. This book does contain references and scenes, which include rape. It is pointed to the story. It is kind of the point, but if you are sensitive to that, you probably shouldn't read the book. In our video, the only thing we'll be mentioning is the fact that there is, in fact, a rape scene. So, and no spoilers. So, I mean, if, if, if you're all right with that, keep watching. If you're not, go ahead and watch one of our other videos. But if you are sensitive to that, maybe you, may, maybe not. But I will tell you this. At the end of the book, Natasha does write a thing about abuse and how she went through abuse and that she hopes that through her book, some people will find some peace through it or some camaraderie through it. So maybe give it a chance um, or flip to, the, flip to the back of the book and look at the author's little acknowledgement section and then decide for yourself. Hey, y'all. Oh, my God. Girls of Paper and Fire, am I right? Yes. Was fire. <laughs> Just to give you a little bit about what the book's about, um, it's about this girl, Lee, who, no, mind you, it does not take place in our world. No. Um, but this girl, Lee, lives at home with her, her father and her father's friend, assistant. That uh, works in his shop. Works in his shop. Um, and her mother was taken seven years prior to the events of the book. And you'll find out. But, uh, so she gets taken, she gets taken to the king's court to the, a concubine, to the demon king. That's right. There are three castes of people in this world. There are the paper caste, which are entirely human, which means all of us. There's the steel, uh... Steel caste. Steel caste is second, right? Yes. There's the steel caste, which is the partial human, partial demon. So they might look mostly human, but have some cat ears. I wish, or, you know, a tail or some, you know, scales on their skin or something, but they're not fully demonized. And then you have your moon cast, which is the full demon. Like, they're humanoid shaped, but they are fully animalistic in terms of physical characteristics. As a matter of fact, the demon king himself is a bull. Yes. He's a bull human, uh, which I kind of pictured in my head like a old god. Like a mine, a, a mine ad or something from like True Blood. That's kind of what I was picturing, mm. or main ad. That's what it was, main ad. She gets taken to be concubine to the demon bull king. Against her will. Against her will. Yeah, I, I, I said taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and violently too. Yes. It's it, it very very beginning of the book. She just immediately her entire world is turned upside down, and her job is to spend a year as the king's concubine. And then transition into a place in the court, whether as some kind of entertainer, whether that be a sex entertainer or a musical entertainer or a dancing entertainer, it didn't matter. Or if she got married off to some noble, but that was a wow. year of concubine and then service, um, for, the rest service for the rest of your life, um, and no chance of ever going home. So of course our main character doesn't fucking like this. Of course <laughs> no. she's not okay with this. Um, <laughs> as you'll find out, she has demon eyes, or so they think. She's got golden eyes, which of course is not a human trait. At least not that I've ever seen. <laughs> no, no. And they, they point out that her eyes are extremely unusual among... She even gets accused of having, her, of having stolen her eyes from a demon. Yes. How does one do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it really does... Some parts of it move really fast. Um, Appropriately so. Yes, because 
it's happening fast, so it's moving fast. And then some parts slow down a little bit and give you a glimpse into what's going on in a little more detail. And then there's parts that speed up again because the events are happening fast. And I have to admit, I had no idea what the book was about, um, but Kitty had picked it and said, we're going to do this one. It's off the bestseller list. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'll give it a shot. Day and a half. It took me a day and a half to read this book. I could not put it down. The author does this amazing thing with color, sound, texture, her descriptions sink you into the world and you're seeing what Lee sees. You're seeing what the other concubines see because it's eight paper girls every year. That's the tradition. Except this year. Except this year, but then it ended up coming back. She gets the nickname of nine because of it. Yes, but they end up coming back to the traditional number eventually. Actually, they go lower than that, don't they? Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Eventually, because of the rules. Break the rules, you are. It's this dichotomy between the demons thinking, you should be grateful, you're a paper girl, you're you're in the castle, you're being... And your family's set for life. But, you know, it's, it's... And they're all teenagers. They are all teenagers. And it's just, you know... Learning about these girls, where they came from, how they came to be there, what their individual experiences and thought processes are. Oh, yeah, the author did a great job of that, too. Like, we were seeing the story from Lee's perspective, but did a great job at, like, showing us the internal personalities oh, yeah. of the other girls. And and they all have distinct personalities, their own reasons for why they feel the way they feel and what they're doing. And why they're there. And why they're there. And so the story revolves around Lee. But you, through Lee, you get to meet the other characters, the mistresses that run the paper house, um, you know, the different characters that she runs into over time, demon and not. And, you know, she's never been out of her home village, ever. So now she's being exposed to fine clothes and being taught the proper way to eat, the proper way to walk, um, all kinds of things to be this high Exposed society. Exposed to new foods. Yes. And new education, part of the girls' training. Wearing shoes. Wearing shoes. Apparently she never wore shoes before. Apparently it was a common thing for paper cast. And this is just something that they, it wasn't actually explicitly said in the book, but it was implied more than once. And it seems like paper cast doesn't normally wear shoes. No. Because a lot of them were very uncomfortable with the shoes they were given, not just because of the style, but because they and, all arrived with yeah. bare feet. And, and even the one girl who didn't, she was she raised was, differently. She was uh, noble. She was, she was noble actually family. one of the noble families. And that's why Ren stood out. Because yes. she was of a noble family, but, but had bare calloused, calloused feet. feet. Yeah, so it, you, you I fell details. in love with Ren, by the way. Oh, I absolutely yes. fell in love with Ren. I want Ren so bad. <laughs> but, you know, you, you're following all these details, and you're, you're learning the trials that these girls are going through. And their fears, and you're learning about their society, and how there are rebels that are against the Demon King's rule, and what's happening to their world in general, and how different people are being treated, and the rebels' attempt to influence. And some of them even break through to some of the paper girls' activities, and are yelling at the paper girls, you know, that they're traitors, and that they're horrible people and the girls are like I didn't ask to be here so it, it it's a lot of moving parts and they all I thought went together well very well like a zipper and I just wow yeah one of the things that I noticed about the book myself was that it's more than just a book it's a statement on so many things um, one, the author does a great job of bringing cultural references into the story. Um, the dresses that are described are Asian-style dresses. I actually had to look them up, and I'm like, oh, I've seen that before. I just didn't know what it was called. There, there is an Asian influence, because I think the she's demons... She's from Malaysia. She's from Malaysia, and a lot of the demons have behaviors common to Asian lore. <laughs> but it's not our world. Yeah. It's and she said she grew up with a multicultural influence, and that's where it was. Because I, I read her her little note and everything. Yeah. Um, and 
So she does a really good job of bringing that culture in there and it shining through without it being cliche or forced. It, it, it's not forced at all. It's, it's, it feels completely natural, which is great. Um, but two, she also does a great job of inclusivity. Um, you have LGBTQ characters within the pages um, and, and social struggles within that. You have the main overall thing that just screamed at me through the entire book was this distorted reflection of our world. Obviously, we don't have demons or anything like that. Maybe we do, but not in that way. But we do have a lot of the same racial issues. And I think what Natasha Nung does is she does a good job of taking everybody from humanity. White, black, woman, man, old, young, disabled, abled, whatever. And puts us all on the same level, at the lowest level. True. True. And then allows somebody who maybe not, it maybe isn't marginalized to be put in that perspective of, of a marginalized group. Because now all humans are on the same level and we are the lowest level. Highly mistreated, highly looked down upon. Taken advantage of, beaten legally, raped legally. Another thing that I saw the author do really well, in my opinion, is... Um, capture the internal struggle of our main character. Our main character, uh, as previously mentioned, has been ripped away from her home, taken all the way across the country and a sea, yes, to a hidden castle that nobody can get to without the proper permissions and locations and magic. And then she's taught all these new things and she doesn't know what to think. So, you know, imagine yourself being ripped away from home and all of these changes taking place. You're going to, at first, you're going to really balk against it. Like, oh, we're humans. We don't like change. <laughs> so, like, that drastic a change, all of us would fight against it. We'd all be like, no, 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 I want to go home. I'm not going to do what you say I'm going to do. And then eventually, most stories like this, they beat you down enough that you're like, okay, fine, this is, I can't yeah. get out. I can't escape. I guess this is all it's I got for my life. It's down. And finally... Not being at peace with it, but being more resigned. To yeah, it. more resigned to it. Yeah, but you totally being resigned to it. But then it takes the turn, and that period, the resi resignation period for Lee, is very small. And then she starts to fight back again. She starts, you know, with with more fire and more vigor and more determination. And she says no. I will not spend the rest of my life here. I will go home. No matter what. No matter what it takes. That's what I will do. And I'm not going to give away the ending. But let's just say that generally when you're that determined, you don't fail. Yeah. When you're so determined, you're willing to do anything. And I think, I think that just throws realism in our face. When you're that determined that you will do anything it takes to get what you want or need, Chances of you failing are very slim to none because you're willing to do anything. <laughs> what does she have left to lose? What does she have left to lose? She's lost her family. She's lost her home. And she's lost her, well, she, some other people that are close to her that I don't want to give away because of spoilers. But, you know, so she's, she's one of those dangerous creatures, somebody who has nothing left to lose. And she believes that. Yeah. She believes in what she's doing now. The, the fight. She needed a few more things to happen to really solidify that, that stance yes. in her. Yeah. Yes. And once she makes her stance, she holds it. Yeah. Yeah. So all in all, this was an amazing book. Oh my god, I would give it ten thumbs up if I could. <laughs> but we are definitely going to be giving this one four, four paws, paws up. up. And I'm going to be trying to see if there's anything else by Natasha Nook. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. She has an amazing way with words. Gosh, thank you, James, James Patterson, for finding Natasha Nung and Girls at Paper of Fire, because oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Next week, we are going to be checking out all the upcoming book releases for the month of February and March. Kind of checking out what's coming down the pipe and see if any of it's familiar or all I mean, or... to be fair, I haven't been keeping up with new releases. 
know, but we got surprised by we this. We did, piece. and now I want to check out more. Like that's that's why we're going to do it. Definitely. <laughs> but don't forget to check the description below where we will list where you can purchase Girls of Paper and Fire, both in new and used book sources, as well as where you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and Patreon. You can become a patron, beginning at just three dollars. Join us for all sorts of fun shit, like early access to our weekly videos, behind the scenes footage, shout outs, and bloopers. And become a patron at any tier and gain access to our exclusive live chat community. As always, don't forget to subscribe, hit that big red button, and to ring the bell so you're always notified when we post new content. We post videos every Monday at 2 p.m. Central and sometimes on Tuesdays and Saturdays. That's what we've got for this week. This has been Book Mouse. And I'm Book Kitty. And we are now signing off.